All right, guys, so we're back here for part two of our slab mug video. Um, the first part, we showed you guys how to make basically a nice cylinder of clay that you can turn into a mug. And we made that cylinder of clay, we put a bottom on it, and I did spend a little time sponging and rounding off the bottom yesterday, and also sponging a little bit on the rim um, after we finished up the video. So when I hold this up, hopefully you can see down inside, um, you can kind of see where the slip is and so forth and you can also see the seam here where we join the two pieces together. So what we want to do is put a small little coil, you could call it a worm of clay, um, along those seams just to reinforce the join and to give it a stronger join and also um, to kind of hide the seams. So we're just going to take some wet clay um, pretty wet, pretty sticky, um, right off the top of the bag. And I'm going to roll this out into a little worm of clay. Um, it doesn't have to be very thick, not even as thick as a pencil. Okay, um, So we're going fairly thin on this. Something about like that. It doesn't have to be perfect either, so don't worry about making exact perfect round coils. So at this point, I'm going to use this little foam pad um, that came with some packing material just to support this. And I'm going to lay this down so that I can see the seam here. Hopefully you guys can see that, where I join those two pieces. I'm going to take my coil and I'm just going to put it right in there on that seam and tear a little bit off. Okay, so now I'm going to take my finger I'm just going to tack this down right on the seam. Um, this is going to be hard for you guys to see as I do it because um, my hand's going to block it. But what I'm going to do is just tack this down. And by that what I mean is just give a little pressure on it and start to smash or smear it down so that it sticks nicely. Okay, so you can kind of see it inside there. So now what I want to do is press down on that a bit more and start to smear it side to side. And as I do that, it's going to hopefully start to blend in so that it's not like a coil that's just stuck there and you kind of go, why is that there? Um, we want it to be there to reinforce the join, but we don't want it to be obvious that we've stuck the clay there. We want it to smooth into the wall of the cylinder, the wall of the pot, so to speak, the mug, um, so that it starts to look natural, like it's not really there. So that takes a little bit of work, and we'll be doing some sponging to help smooth and hide that even more. But for now, use that your finger, and if you can't get all the way down in the bottom, you could use the back side of a spoon and that would work as well. Mine's not too tall, so I'm able to get my fingers down there in the bottom to smooth that together. Okay, so this is just kind of rough. I'll go back and I'll work this a little bit more, especially with a sponge. But you can see hopefully down inside there maybe this way is better, um, where I've put it in there and I've smeared it back and forth um, to try and cover that area where the seam is and then I'm going to smooth it out here in a few minutes. So now I'm going to take a little more of that clay and try to make the one for the very bottom, if you can, one full coil that wraps all the way around rather than piecing it together. I just think it makes it a little easier, makes it a little bit nicer and neater looking as well. So now on the very bottom, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this, and this is where if you have a tool or something, the back side of a pencil, you can just use that to kind of push that coil down and tack it into the corners or the edges at the bottom. Careful you don't hit the top of the rim of your mug too much with a tool or your hand. If it's still soft, it will cause it to distort and change its shape. And we want to try and keep this nice and round. So if 
I hold this up again, hopefully you can see down inside, and you can see that coil just kind of laying in there. So now what I'm going to do is take my finger and go down carefully, and again, just start to tack or press it into that corner seam. to get it to stick initially. And again, if you have one of the wood knives, um, which I don't have here on my desk, um, that has the little end that looks like a tongue depressor, you could always use that. You could also, like I say, use the tip of a spoon, the backside of a spoon. Fingers work the best, but sometimes it's not easy to get all the way down inside. Okay. So if I hold this up again, hopefully you're able to see down inside and you can see that it is tacked down in there. So now what I'm going to do is just basically take my finger and smear it. Um, as you smear it, it's going to start to smooth into the bottom piece as well as the top piece and it will start to just blend in that corner or that edge or seam, however you want to refer to it and smooth in there so that it fills it in, gives it a rounded bottom, so to speak, in that, in that edge or that corner, um, which will make it easier when you go to clean and do your dishes. <laughs> and just smooths it out, makes it look nicer. Now, if you get a spot as you're blending it where you feel like, how do I want to say, almost like there's a gap there and it hasn't filled in quite as nicely, then you could always take a little more clay make a little more of a worm or a coil of clay and push it back down in there. Because um, sometimes it blends out and smooths in and you find that as it does, you get little gaps. Try to get it to be the same or even all the way around. All right, we're almost there. Okay. So at this point, if I hold it up, hopefully the camera is able to see down inside and I've put that coil in there, I've tacked it in, I've taken my finger, I've basically pushed down and smeared it and blended it into that bottom kind of corner edge. And um, that should be nice and smooth now. Okay. So now what we want to do is sponge and smooth it out. You see, I just nicked the edge of that, putting my hand in there. So I'm just going to take a little bit of coil and fill in that little nick. That's why you've got to be super careful as you're doing this, reaching inside the pot so that you don't mess up the rim. Okay, we can sponge and smooth that out a little bit later. Hopefully we won't be able to notice it. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and smooth the inside. Much easier to do this now before we put the handle on. So what I like to do is basically take my sponge, squeeze most of the water out of it, and what I'll do first is I'll lay it on its side and I'll sponge this area where I, I covered the seam that goes up the side just to get it started. Just kind of work to smooth it back and forth and to blend in, smooth in that coil that we put there so that it doesn't look so obvious, okay? We want to try and hide that so it looks more natural. And I'll go back and work that a little bit more here. So then, We'll take our sponge, keep rinsing it as you go. And rather than trying to turn this to get the bottom, um, turn your hand with the sponge, I find it easier if you take the sponge and just rest your project on top of the sponge. While you're resting it on the sponge, use the other hand to basically turn the project instead of you turning your hand inside. Just hold it there and try to push the sponge into that corner where we laid down the coil. And as you're turning it, um, the water is going to kind of soften the clay and in a sense almost turn it to slip. It's gonna get really um, kind of 
slimy and smooth and nice, and it's gonna help to smooth that coil in there so that it's not obvious, so that we don't see it as a coil. And you can kind of see what it does to your sponge, and you can see how it's starting to smooth out and really make that bottom inside corner nice, almost as if it was wheel thrown. So now we're going to go ahead and just rinse our sponge and do that a couple more times to really make sure we're smoothing that out. So like I say, it doesn't look obvious. Okay, so I'm trying to hold this here and now I'm kind of moving the sponge inside up the outside edge, almost like um, it, like you would be dragging a sponge up the side of your pot when you're wheel throwing. And I know you guys haven't experienced that, but perhaps you've seen a video on wheel throwing and you've watched someone do it. And so as you drag that from the middle or the outside edge up the side, it's gonna smooth out your inside. And like I say, it's almost gonna make it look like it's wheel thrown. So it'll give it a really nice clean finish, okay? Now, you can't go all the way up to the very top because um, the mug will slide off of your hand. So when you get up about halfway to the top, at that point, you just have to put your sponge inside and use your hand and do it that way. Okay, so then we'll just touch up the rim a little bit, and then we'll move on to the handle so that we can keep this video to a minimum. All right, so hold this up one more time. You can see inside, hopefully it looks nice, smooth, clean, and professional. All right, so now what we wanna do is we wanna put our handle on. And if you remember yesterday, um, I showed you um, a couple options for making your handles um, using coils. And I think two coils side by side um, is a really good option in terms of making a nice strong handle. And so I have these there, the ones that I've made. And um, you've got the question mark one, which is kind of for a two finger hold um, on your mug. And then you've got more of a C shape, which you could probably get three fingers in. Um, it's just preference in terms of what you like the looks of and in terms of comfort. So what I try to do is find where the seam is and I can kind of tell this is where my seam was. Um, and that's where I put the handle. If the handle's there, it's kind of blocking and hiding a little bit that that's where my seam was. So um, I will then take my handle and I will go ahead and take a look at it, see which side I like best. Um, I didn't cut this very straight, so I'm gonna make a little cut on it real quick just to make sure it's got a nice straight line. And then what I'll do is take my handle and I'll kind of line it up and mark where I want to cross hatch. So what I do is, like I say, um, this is where my seam is. I lay a ruler across the top. And the reason I put a ruler across the top is because I want my handle to be below that top edge. Why? Because what I find is if I keep my handle lower than the top of the mug, it fits in the dishwasher much easier. And there's less chance of it getting bumped and broken. Um, so I try to keep it below the top of the rim of the pot. Um, if it goes up above, then sometimes it's a little awkward for fitting into a dishwasher. It's just my preference. Also, a lot of times when I put handles on, my mugs, I'll turn the mugs upside down because then gravity is pushing the handle down and into the mug and it helps it stay on better. So if my handle doesn't go above the top, I can turn it over easily. If it goes above the top rim, then I have to kind of scooch it off the edge of a board um, to let it sit upside down. Otherwise it rests on the handle and damages the handle. So what I will do is kind of move my stool back and I squat down here and I kind of hold my handle up where I like it and I kind of double check the height and see that it's underneath where my ruler is and then I will just go ahead and roughly make a mark, slight little mark here, just so I know where it lines up 
um, to be in the correct spot. So then I'll go ahead and lay this on its side so that the seam is up so I can see where it's at. And then I'll go ahead and take the handle, line it up where I made my little marks, and just double check and make sure that I have it where I want it. And I try to leave at least a half inch up from the bottom, um, the handle from the bottom of the mug. Because when you go to fire this, if your handle is all the way down level with the bottom, then you're gonna have to clean the glaze off the bottom of your handle because it'll touch the kiln shelf. Um, I guess I should be holding it here. Um, so if this handle is up higher, then you don't have to worry about cleaning glaze off of here or it possibly sticking to the kiln shelf. So I try not to have the handle go all the way to the bottom. And if you do the question mark handle, kind of the same thing. I try to cut it off a quarter to a half of an, in of an inch above the bottom. Um, the glaze tends to run down on these question mark handles and if that happens, it puddles here a little bit. So you want to give yourself a little leeway so that your handle doesn't stick and it doesn't damage your mug when it gets fired. So just a couple little tips there from um, the experience of firing projects. So once I have this on here, I'll mark the edges a little bit. Again, this is just to let me know where to crosshatch and paint my slip. So now what I'm going to do is just go ahead and crosshatch this real quickly. And again, crosshatching is just etching a series of lines one direction in the clay and then crossing over them, etching lines the opposite direction. Okay, and what that does, it just kind of roughs up the weave and strengthens the join. Um, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on the handle itself. Now, don't go too far down on the handle because it is a curve here. So you don't want to have a bunch of crosshatch marks that aren't going to get covered up either by slip or by the joining of it. Now, when you join your handles, you want your handles to be almost leather hard. In other words, it's nice if they still flex a little bit so you can shape them if you need to. Um, but we don't want them so soft and so wet that they won't hold their curve. Otherwise, your handle is going to flop all over the place um, and won't just hold that nice curve and it'll kind of collapse on you. So use plenty of slip. We can wipe away the excess slip. Um, put some on the mug itself as well. All right, and that should be plenty. So we're going to line this up where we made our mark. And then... We'll stand it up here in a minute once we get it started. Okay, then stand that up. Take the ruler again, just lay it across to double check. And then I tend to squat down here so I can get a better look. And then I get it in position. Um, where I'm happy with it. And I try to hold the inside of the mug as I press the handle on the outside um, so that I'm not pressing it in such a way that I'm pressing the mug in and changing the shape of the mug. Um, I do want to press against it, but I don't want to press the, the cylinder part of the mug to the point that it changes its shape. And then I look from behind. I'll turn it here. So then I look from behind to make sure the um, handle is straight up and down as well. And sometimes I'll look from this side just to see that it's sitting straight, that it's not um, leaning right or left, um, but it is sitting there nice and straight. And then again, so it's straight up and down. Um, Want to try and do everything to make it look as perfect and as professional as I can. Um, and then once I'm satisfied that I have it in the correct position, I'll go back again and I'll just press a little bit more. Really trying to work to make sure it is joined well. And at this point, since I have the foam padding, sometimes uh, what I'll do is rest it on the foam padding, take a little bit of clay, and put it on each side of it so it doesn't roll and fall off here. 
and I'll give it a few minutes, five, ten minutes, to just kind of sit like this. So the handle's straight up and down and gravity is pushing it down into the mug, okay? And then what I'll do is just take my finger and I'll clean away the excess slip. On both sides and also in the center. Oh, epic fail, huh? Spilling my slip everywhere. And then I'll get my sponge. And I'll go back here and just try to clean this up a little bit. Just again, smoothing everything out, trying to make it look as clean and as nice as I can get it, okay? So I'm gonna let this rest and hang out like this, give it a chance to kind of firm up just a wee bit, and then I'm gonna go back and do some touch-up work, just sponging, cleaning, and finishing it off. So this is the one that I had done in practice. I'm preparing for the video, and you can see, again, I've put the handle on, I've taken the time to really sponge clean up around the handle. I've done all the sponging on the inside, really doing my best to make it look almost like it was wheel thrown and to look as clean and perfect as I can make it. Um, so now at this point, I can either let this just kind of hang out and dry or I can go ahead and decorate it. Um, if I let it dry too much, I won't be able to decorate it because it will have gotten beyond the leather hard stage. Um, but at this point, it's still moist enough that I can go and decorate it if I choose to decorate it. So that's it in a nutshell. That's how you're basically going to finish off your mug, add your handle, and then again, the decoration part is up to you. If you choose to leave it plain, that's fine. Just remember, when it's plain, you can notice all the imperfections that much easily, so you want to make sure that um, if you leave a plane, you spend a lot of time sponging, smoothing, cleaning everything up, trying to make it as perfect as you can. All right. See you in class.